Just a quick reminder that we do have a few guests here today, actually. We have our guest speaker, Joe Hebert. I believe we have his mom. <laughs> and we also have um, somebody from River Valley Rising. We have Melissa over here in the corner. So I really would appreciate them all seeing you at your best this morning. I know we're coming back after our three-day weekend. I am very pleased that about a month ago, Mr. Joe Hebert messaged me and said, I wonder if I could come and speak to your student body. Joe graduated from Darago High School, and he has a story about his life, which is a real life happening of somebody who graduated from Darago High School. I've talked to him over the phone, emailed back and forth, and I feel like his story, his life story of how he got where he is today, is important enough for all of you to hear. So I'm going to ask you to give your best listening ears to Mr. Joe Hebert. Good morning, Darigo. How are we today? Uh, I wrote something down, but I mean, we'll see how it goes. I'm usually just off the whim with this kind of stuff. Um, so for those of you that might not know who I am, um, I was one of you, um, sitting in those bleachers during a student of the month assembly, you know, cheer, I, I think today is student of the month. No, it's not. Okay, it changed. All right, but in assemblies, you know, with friends, um, you know, laughing, having a good time, um, and honestly hoping the assembly goes on long enough that you miss next class, you know, I've been there, you know. Um, and today, I'm here to touch on a subject that perhaps gets overlooked and not often talked about to young adults as yourself sitting in front of me today. Um, I am here today not only to share my experience through my years at Darigo, in which, uh, which had many highs, but even more regrets that I can never get back. I am someone who battled with a very overlooked and pushed, pushed aside addiction through high school that in fact turned into the darkest days of my life. Uh, the day that I marched out of this gymnasium in 2014. Um, you know, basically guys, like I, I'm a graduate of the class of 2014. Um, I played sports at this high school. Um, I played 13 years of football. Um, I played all four here at Darigo. And like those are some of the moments that I cherished here, you know, but some of the moments that, you know, um, I could have done better, right? I could have um, made an example better of myself, um, and I fell short in a lot of areas, you know? I remember coming into this school, um, you know, I, I you know, was an eighth grader, you were at the top of the school at, at Darigo Middle School, and then you come in here freshman year, and you're like, you're the low man on the totem pole, you know, and you're somebody that's young and like, you know, I talked about it in the last class, like, you know, these, these juniors and seniors have full-grown beards, and, like, you're just, like, starting your maturity of a, of a young adult, um, you know, and there was a lot of, there was a lot of, like, insecurities of, like, where I fit in, um, who to hang out with, um, you know, I, I love sports to a level that I wanted to stay out of trouble. The first, um, two years I played basketball as well, um, and I came into Darigo when it was, it was title town, right? Like we were winning gold balls. Um, we were winning championships. We were getting to the championships. Um, you know, I remember football, you know, my junior and senior year, we were, you know, I, I love talking about football. I can talk about it all day. Um, but we were heavy, heavy underdogs. And this is when it was 11 man football, not eight man. So I'm getting used to like watching that. But, uh, you know, I was a part of it, and I was, you know, starting, I, I started on the line, and, and you know, I, I enjoyed every second of it. I chased it for 13 years, you know, I chased that feeling, you know. They put in the lights my, my sophomore year, and like, oh, like that feeling, like being in here before a game and like going out there, like all like big moments of my high school, but there's obviously, you know, a, a, a set to this where, um, I kind of did the accessible thing that, uh, that is accessible here in high school. Like I, I started using marijuana at a very young age, um, at, at 16, my, my sophomore year. Um, everyone around me was doing it, right? And you know, there's somebody in this crowd 
that, that smokes weed, that drinks on the weekends or drinks after school or, or smokes after school, right, that, that can relate to this. And I, I would never ask anyone to stand up and be like, yeah, that's me, right? Because I was that person when they had a speaker come in um, and speak at Darago about this stuff that I laughed and I teed and I was like, yeah, like, that's not me, right? Like, thanks for the information. Um, until I got real in my life, right? Um, I then knew where I fit in, right? I knew that um, when I picked up marijuana for the first time in my life, I fell in love, right? And I didn't fall in love to the point of, I'm just gonna do it on the weekends. It became, you know, and there's, there's teachers here that were teaching when I, was, when I was in school that could attest to this. It was before school. It was during lunch at school. It was after school. It was before football practice. Um, I couldn't stop. And, and like, did, did I look at it like as a problem then? Absolutely not. And that's why I'm here today. Just to, you know, this isn't going to be everybody's story, right? This is going to be. This is this is going to affect some people. Um, this is going to make realization. There's somebody in this you know, gymnasium today that is living a sim similar, maybe different experiences that, that I was living in high school, right? Um, somebody that's, you know, a, a likable guy, a likable, a likable male, a likable female, um, that is, um, you know, just, just, just living their high school life and like using these substances that are just so overlooked, right? Everyone smokes pot. Right. Let, let's 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 cut to the chase. Like it's not something that's even illegal anymore, which is astonishing. Um, there's people that, that drink on the weekends. Right. There's. I, I remember when I was in school, I, I was smoking at a friend's house that their mom their mom was smoking with us. Right. After football games, we'd all pile into you know a house and you know we'd just be all sore and we'd be relaxing, we'd be you know smoking a little bit. Um, and it was like okay, right? Like it wasn't, it didn't seem like a problem um, until it was, right? Um, and, it, and it never really, you know, affected me enough in high school to where it paid consequence with football. Um, I, I never missed a game. I never was suspended from a game. Um, you know, and I was able to finish that, right? And then like my senior year is like really when it got worse. And I, I'm gonna kind of tell my story through because I want people to, like I can sit and tell you about my my um, experience in like my really darkest days, but I want people to relate to me when I was where you guys are at, right? right? Um, senior year was a big year for me. Um, I knew it was my last year of football. Um, I knew that you know we had a good team. I'm going to talk about that a little bit, um, but I could not stop smoking weed. So like I wasn't somebody that was in the gym all summer long and like bettering my game or like stuff like that because I was so blindly like lost to this, you know, substance, right? Um, and we started the season off right, right? Like we, you know, won some games. We won some very tight games. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we did, long story short with that, we, we basically, we got um, beaten up pretty badly by a Winthrop school that was really good. Um, and I'm like, man, like, it's over, you know, it's over for us, like, we're done, and somehow we went in the playoffs, and, and uh, you know, we, we worked on some things, and, you know, I don't want to touch too much on football, but I just like to go all day with it, uh, but uh, we beat Winthrop, and, uh, you know, we ended up in the Western Maine Championship game versus um, oh, a very good Oak Hill team, um, and we lost, and, like, this is, like, the moment for me. I remember losing by two, right, all the seniors, we just played all through AYF years together, it was over. And I, and I was sitting on the field and I'm just reflecting and I'm just like, that one thing for 13 years that I chased for so long is now officially over, right? Where's my life going now, right? And that's when I became very reckless and very careless. Um, my parents, uh, they knew I was doing it, but like again, like it's like, you know, my, my father, you know, and experimented through high school. My, everyone kind of does, right? And they're like, ah, oh, no, they'll just figure it out, right? 
they're going to grow up and they're going to be fine. I have friends that were smoking weed and drinking just as much as I was in high school and they own houses and they, you know, have two degrees in college and, and they're very successful, right? So this isn't for everybody, right? But for somebody like me, I, I suffered from, you know, substance use disorder. Um, I, uh, once I put something in my body, I could not stop, right? Um, and I didn't know that until 19 to 20 years old, right? I had no idea what was going to happen to me. Um, so I graduated high school. I attended, um, you know, and, and in high school, obviously, like senior year, it kind of like ramped up for me. Like I was not somebody that was known for like, oh, he's a good kid. Like, you know, I, I played football and stuff, but like after football, it was like, oh, like, you want to smoke weed on, on the weekends? Or like, and I know everybody in this room knows, like, if they want to go smoke weed or drink, they know which person in this school to go to to get it, right? And have that fun. And I was that person when I was in high school. They came to me, right? In the, in the present moment, right? Like, I felt great. It's like, I'm the man. Everybody wants to be around me, right? But little did I know, they didn't want anything that I had to offer them as far as, like, a, a connection or a relationship. They wanted what I had, right? And it wasn't somebody I wanted to be, right? Um, it was something that was... Um, I, I developed in my life, and, and I, I wanted to... I, I wanted to pursue it and continue it because I was always like anxious and always looking for different like avenues of life to like cut like shortcuts and stuff like that and that was my shortcut right like I'm not going to pay for this substance I'm going to sell it and I'm going to have everyone around me that, that does it and I'm not going to have to pay for this right um, not a, not a, probably one of the more bigger regrets I have in this because it, what it what it what it kind of put to the wayside for me was college Right? What am I going to do in my future? Um, what's my profession going to be? My grades slipped. Luckily enough, I, I finished um, my first semester, and you know, Mrs. Weston, wherever she is, she's like, "Oh, Joe, you have like three more credits, and you're graduated." I was like, "Oh, beautiful!" Right? I uh, took a work release program. Um, probably the worst mistake of my life. Um, so basically, essentially, I went to school every other day. Um, my second semester, so from whenever it is, January to, to um, May, June, I uh, went to school every other day, right, and, and then my drinking um, started very heavily, I, I was not even coming to school the days that I was supposed to be here, I'd come in, you know, two hours late and just not even care, like every teacher would look at me and be like, you, are you still a student here? Yeah. Right? And like I just floated through and like I missed, and, and the, the point of this is I missed some of the greatest moments of my senior year by doing that, right? I had a great class that, you know, was very involved and very, you know, like had made a lot of memories and I was not a part of those memories, right? Um, I missed out on those opportunities because a substance took control of my life. But I was blind to it, completely blind to it. because. 50% of the high school was doing it, right? So how am I different, right? Well, I was different by the, the, the progression, right? And I graduated high school, and like this was like the turning point for me, and I spoke about this in earlier classes. Um, a lot of you might know who I am. Uh, my father lives directly across from this high school. He, sells, he works on all the snowmobiles, four-wheelers, stuff like that. Um, and... <laughs> You know, we, we graduated, and I had a few shots of, you know, um, alcohol before I, I graduated high school. I smoked before I, before I graduated. So, like, I'm at the point now where I can't even, like, draw a sober breath, right? Like, I, I'm uncomfortable when I'm sober. Um, I'm uncomfortable to have any, like, confrontation with anyone if I'm not under the influence on something, right? Um... And after, after, after we graduated, they gave us like 45 minutes and then we're going to Project Grad, right? And I snuck across and, and went to my dad's house and I had stuff all ready to go. I smoked, I drank, I got like feeling really good and like I literally missed the last moment I've ever had with the class of 2014 because I was just, you know, I was drunk, I was high, 
I didn't enjoy myself because everybody else was enjoying themselves, and I didn't have any more substances on the on the on the um, trip, right? So it's like those are the moments for me that I look back and I'm like, wow, like how did I not know? From what I know now, if I would have known this stuff when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, I, I don't think my life would turn out the way it did. But um, it did, right? And it got real really fast. Um, at 19, I, I, you know, I turned, uh, I was 18 in that summer, I went to college um, at Southern Maine Community College in Portland, um, and I did one month. Uh, I started, and again, like, by this time, I'm starting to experiment. Um, you know, I, I tried um, acid and, and mushrooms and, you know, cocaine, like, that was in the mix as well. Um, and, and, like, I, I was like, you know what, like, I'm going to finish school when I'm ready to finish school. I'm not going to like start school and stay in school for two years and then flunk out and then I have all this college. Honestly, ironically, probably the only smartest decision I ever made in my whole entire life from that, from ages 16 to 20, uh, 23. Um, you know, I, I dropped out. I came back to this hometown and, and I, um, I started a job. I was working for uh, Pepsi. I was like stocking shelves for them. And, uh, Basically, enough, uh, what happened was is I got around the wrong people, which really, like I look at it, it's not the wrong people. Like most of my addiction, I was right side by side with somebody that I played football with on a Friday night, right? Somebody that I was walking the schools of Darigo High with, uh, you know, and we both were going through the same dark path. Um, and, I'll, and I'll share about that later on in kind of a kind of a, you know, gut-wrenching experience that I've had that's, you know, just so, I'm so blessed to have uh, today. But um, basically, guys, at the age of 19, um, I became a, a full-blown heroin addict. Um, and I know that's a lot to process. Um, what is heroin, right? Heroin's an opiate. It's a very strong opiate that's easily to get addicted to, right? Pot and, pot and booze, like the blunts and, and, the, and, the, and the red solo cups, like, just no longer did it for me. Right, um, my progression was so big, my tolerance was so high that I needed something else. Right, um, and here I am at 19, fully, fully addicted to, to heroin. Right, that is about to turn to fentanyl. Um, you didn't tell me at 16 when I first smoked pot for the first time that that's where my life was going to go. Right, you didn't tell me after a game when I went and smoked with all my friends that like one day I was going to end up in a hospital bed overdosed on heroin. Right? Nobody told me those things. Nobody, nobody knew that was going to happen for me. What happened was I'm somebody that cannot stop and I didn't know that. Right? And I had to go through these experiences. You know, I should not be here today. Right? Because between the ages of 19 and 23 I was fully blown addicted to heroin. And I did not stop. I, um, I overdosed four times. Um, and just to really bring some realness, I don't want to get into like war stories or anything, but I entered a hospital at one of those times um, with an oxygen level of 72. Right? Your oxygen level should be between 95 and 99 at all times. And I, I was somebody that was on, an, uh, was on a ventilator. I was on a life support, right? And I had doctors coming into my room telling my mother to plan a funeral and to either be ready to me, for me to be a vegetable. At some of the most peaking years somebody should be at the age of 23, right? The ages of 21 to 30, you're figuring your life out, right? You're living... Other than high school, you're living some of your best days, right? Because you're, you're becoming an adult, right? You're, you're, you're going through college, you're finishing college, you're finding the love of your life, uh, whatever it might be, right? Um, and you're kind of carving your way through life. But here I am, right, in an ICU where you should be walking through an ICU and seeing a young person and seeing them on a, on a, on a breathing tube and be like, oh, like, how tragic, car accident, right, broken neck, something, something tragic, but here I am, like, self-inflicted, put myself in this, right, and it was something that happened that is just beyond me, right, like, I just, I got so out of control, I couldn't stop, right, but I, again, like, 
like, if you look at my life, like, play football, right? Attended Darigo. I was likable here, right? I thought, right? Like, I, people, people liked me. Like, my, my parents were well known in the area. I had three sisters that went through this high school. You know, people knew who I was. And, like, I was in a dark place. And I wish that was my last time. Um, unfortunately, you know, there was one more time after that. And, um, I'm grateful it wasn't as bad as that time, but that was my worst. I think that was like my wake-up call, but I wasn't still there yet, right? Because um, again, like I got, I got sober at a young age too, right? So I, I can't touch much on that because a lot of people won't understand. Um, but I, I was dealing with a lot of immaturity uh, along with a nasty drug addiction, right? I, I wasn't grown up. I didn't grow up when I, when I left there. Um, you know, I thought I was cool. I thought I was, you know, everybody liked me, but they liked me for the wrong reasons, right? Um, and somehow, by you know, a lot of a lot of people that are in my life today that I I'm dear, so grateful for. Um, I was able to, you know, my last ever drink or drug was um, September. I mean, sorry, June fifteenth of two thousand nineteen um, was my last time I ever used the substance. And, uh, you know, I hold on to that stuff because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 26 now. I got sober when I was, you know, just about to turn 24, so I was still 23. And that's a tough age to get sober. Um, I don't know many people my age anymore that was addicted to the things I was addicted to that are even alive today. I've lost more people in the past two to three years to this disease than I could have ever imagined. I read a statistic yesterday, and I wanted to share with you guys. 150 people in the United States of America die from a drug overdose every single day. I don't know how many people are in the bleachers today, but that's pretty good chunk, right? Pretty good chunk every single day. Will it happen to somebody in here? Like, I, I hope everyone, the message gets clear to hear. And when listen, like. Like I said, there's people looking at me right now thinking I'm absolutely crazy, that I, I'm not that bad, right? I do smoke, but I think I have it under control. There's people in here that are probably as bad as I was, if not worse, in high school, that will move on and like something will click and say, I'm done, right? Because that's the nature of addiction. Addiction, I firmly believe, is hereditary. You're born with it. You're born with addictive personality, and you either have it or you don't, right? Because I have people in my life that were, were getting high and, and drinking with me all, all up until I was 20, and then they said, you know what, I'm done. I'm going to go graduate college now, and I'm going to buy a house now, and I'm going to raise a family now. And they do that, right? That, that wasn't my, my story, right? So I'm here to like kind of give the warning signs and kind of give you guys some experience of like what my high school life looked like, right? Uh, and I'm gonna be sharing in like other classes this afternoon, but you know, this was nerve wracking for me. Um, I've never spoke to a crowd like this where everyone's just kind of like looking at me. I usually get head nods because I'm speaking to people that are struggling with the same things. Um, so, you know, and, and this place just touches me, right? Because guys, I live in a whole different state now. I live in Massachusetts, unfortunately. Um, I wish I could live here, um, but I don't. Um, there's no community like that, like there. There is nothing. I, I'm, a, I'm a part of the Wilmington, Massachusetts community now, which is kind of a small town in Massachusetts, but it's nothing like here, right? So there, this place is special, and I took advantage of it, right? Everybody that works at this, this high school, everybody that's involved in this community loves each and everybody in this community. And that's how this place stays running, right? Reach out for help, right? As, as embarrassing and as like, oh, that's not me, you never know. Because you could be the next statistic that's a part of that 150 people a day that die from a drug overdose, right? And you don't even know it's coming. I know that I am completely anonymous, and um, you know Superintendent Doyen will have my my contact info if anyone's struggling or just wants to talk about life in general. I love to talk. Um, I would love to to have people you know, reach out to me, you know, and 
again, like I said, like this place is special. Like don't ever miss any opportunity that you have that this high school has to offer you. Because the memories here that I missed out on, I can never get back, right? I can never go back to a fourth quarter of a playoff game, right, and wish I did something different, right? I can never go back and be a part of student council. I can never go back and, you know, be in the top ten of my class, which I wasn't, right? I can never be involved again, right? Really, the only thing, I got, a, I got the Craig Lange of the Football Award when I graduated from here, um, and I... <laughs> You know, this is just me trying to talk myself down, but I firmly believe it because my sisters were very good friends with him, right? And I got it, right? Like, I missed out on all these opportunities, right? Opportunities to grow, opportunities to, to go on to even a better school than I did and, and actually do what I wanted to do. Like, I wanted to move away from here, but this, I, I came back here and some of my darkest days of my life are, are, were here. Do I love this town? Absolutely, right? But my words of advice to you guys is if you want to live here, just have a goal, have a trade, have something you want to do, right? Because you, you see too many times people that get stuck here, you know, that, and unfortunately there's just not a lot of, you know, jobs and, and accessibility to do things, right? But you can do anything you want in life, anything, if you put your mind to it, right? I, I wasn't somebody that had a disability to be able to not be able to finish school at a high, at high honors. I had all of it. I had the gift of being smart. I just did not apply myself whatsoever, right? Because this is four years, right? I know at times it seems like a very long time. It's very short. I have graduated in 2004. I have been out of this high school for eight years now. Right? And some of these teachers in here teach us, right? And it's to think about that we have been out of here for eight years. That's two times that anyone's been in this school, right? It goes by fast. And if you don't have a plan when you leave here, you're just going to be kind of like sitting there like, oh no, oh no, right? Like set goals, know what you want to do in life, and like achieve them, right? Because that's something I didn't do. I set goals, I didn't achieve them. And as, as much as that sounds like small and petty, it means a lot because it affects you. It affects people around you um, when you don't, you know, when you don't set those goals, right? And like, and my last thing is like family, right? Like, never take your family for granted. When your mom makes you mad or like tries to discipline you when you're 18 and you're still in high school, like listen to her because that's like her last year of being able to be a mom, right? When you don't have a, a great relationship with your dad because of the choices you make in high school, which I had, realize what you're doing. Because I lost eight years with my father, right? I lost eight years of relationship with him. The only relationship we had is when I was playing football. That's it. I didn't have a relationship with him at all, right? Um, now, I have probably the best relationship I've ever had with him. He's my best friend, right? We, we do everything together. Um, I wish I could go back, but I can't. So I have to like spread my message to you guys because life can get bad and it can get bad quick, right? And if I can save one person from going down the path that I went with, um, I hope I can, right? And my last thing that I want to touch on that I touched on earlier, um, I'm not going to name his name, but I've had the gift to, 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 for somebody that I went to school with that's my very good friend nowadays. Um, we played football together, we walked these halls together, right? Um, we went down the same path, opiate addiction, heroin addiction. And we both get to stand side by side together over two years sober together. You know, and like that, that's something that just like, it's like, man, like I never thought it in a million years. And if you look at statistics, there's no way both of us would do it. Right? And we did it, you know, not together, but we're, we're friends and we talk every day and we, you know, we have a connection now that I've never had with anyone in my whole entire life. Like, we can talk on a level of like, where do I want my life to go? Stuff like that. Like, when I was in high school, everything was so surface, right? Everything was like, hey, hey, what's up, man? What's up, man? Like, handshakes, dude, what's up? You know, that's it, right? We weren't talking about like life building and like, you know, where you want to be in 10 years, 
you know, like some people do, but I, I wasn't. So like, that was a huge gift for me. So um, again, guys, like I'm here. Um, if this touched you, I'm glad. Um, if there's tears, if there's emotion, there's people to help you here, right? Don't overlook this because addiction gets overlooked. And I know like with COVID-19 going on, guess what? There's more people dying of addiction every day. And that's a fact. Because I work in this field. I work in addiction treatment. My, my phone this morning, I'm not even on today. It's been just blowing up all day, right? I, unfortunately, I, I run like a admissions department at a detox. And I have a lot of responsibility with it. Um, and there's people dying every day. And I, I'm glad to help. Right? I, I'm somebody that like I devoted my life to this and that's what I feel was right for my life. Right? I feel like that's what you know, I can't talk about my spiritual life in here, but that, that's what my plan was. Right? That was my call. Um, find what you find what you want to do in life and achieve it. And um, I love this community. Um, I love Darigo. I'll always be Darigo. And I'm here for you. So that's all I got. Thanks. one question. So, it, obviously, you're very brave to come here and share your story. Now that you're in recovery, what does that mean, like, when you have your 10th or 20th class reunion, and they break out the alcohol and the drugs at that time? What does that mean for you? Um, hey, listen, I'm never going to run away from it, right? Um, and I got sober at a young age, so... Um, my goal was, I'm not going to live a boring life, right? I talked about this in class in the fall. I, I literally, like, have the funnest time sober. Like, how that is even possible, I don't know. I literally go to, I, I love electronic dance music. That's, like, my favorite thing. And I go to clubs, nightclubs, like, stone cold sober with that friend I talk about that was with me in Darigo. And we go absolutely stone cold sober and have the time of our lives. Right? Did I do that stuff early on? No, I did. But it took time, and like, I had to be acceptable to my surroundings, right? And be proud of who I am, and know that like I'm helping people, and know that like nothing is going to dictate what I'm doing right now, right? Nothing ever is going to dictate whether I'm at risk or not. If I feel uncomfortable, I leave, right? But so recovery is a lifetime commitment. Yeah. There's no like. Take this weekend. It's a one day at a time thing, right? I can't look in the future too much, but I can know that I'm living my best years right now, right? And I'm doing it without a substance. You'll find me at Fenway Park probably the majority of the summer, right? I'm at Patriots games. Um, <laughs> and, and here I am. Like, I, I was like this isolated small kid in my house. Like, I, I didn't think I'd ever take on the big city. Um, you know, I have a, I have a, long-lasting relationship with a girl now that I never thought would be ever in my life, um, that supports me, that drives me, that pushes me. Um, but if I didn't get to where I was, I, I wouldn't be, um, I wouldn't be, she wouldn't have been put in my life. Right? So it's a challenge, guys, but like, listen, like some of your lives, like I said, they're, they're never going to turn out the way mine did. And just all I, all I say is like, dream big and like, let Dara go and let all of these people that care about you, like, gift you. Because, like, once you, once you hit the real world, like, that's what hit me. Real world hit me, right? Nobody cares, right? Like, right now, like, like I, it's, it's so funny. I talked about it. Like, being late, right? I was late today because I was on a work call. I felt guilty, right? But, like, when I was coming through, I didn't even care that I was 10 minutes late to class or I was 30 minutes late to class. But like, when you're late to work, your boss is affected. People are affected by you being late, right? And I'm still learning, trust me, I am not the most on-time person. Um, that trait is not gone from me. But um, just like little things. Like, I had to literally incorporate new things in my life. Making my bed. Never did that, right? I'm the first one to admit it. Right? If, there, if there's people in this crowd that make their bed, ah, congratulations, like, keep doing it, right? Because it's a simple thing that gets your day started right, right? 
Um, picking up after yourself. <laughs> simple thing. Doing a chore. Simple thing, right? Like, I never did those things because I was like, yeah, I'm better than that. Right? So, yeah, that's really it. All right. So I'll just say that Joe will be here for the rest of the school day. So if you see him in the hallways or at lunchtime and you have a question, please feel free to approach him. And it is lunchtime. Thank you so much.